Yo, what is up, guys? Snap here today. We're going to be talking about all of the party atlas strats that are going to be running for the 324 Necropolis expansion. First off, I'm going to go over some of the scarabs here that were revealed in this news post here. It's important to look at all of the important juicing scarabs and how they were changed and how that will affect our MFing strategy in the new expansion. Uh, first off, a few of the scarabs that are super relevant to MF here is obviously the Reliquary Scarab. And now this actually ate a gigantic nerf. The winged Reliquary Scarab here used to give you 250% more unique items found in this area. Area for the slot. And now if you were to put in the Reliquary Scarab here, it's now a 100% increased unique items found in area. If you're wondering, I believe that the change from more to increase unique items is just so that it doesn't stack uh, in a certain way with itself. Uh, because the limit is two here, um, if you were to add two of these Scarabs, they don't want you having two more multipliers on top of each other. That would probably not be great. Um, and so they elected to have a 100% increased unique items found here. And I believe because this stacks to two, that is the main motivation to change it to increased here. However, if you only have one is probably going to be functioning identical to the way that the old scarab works, but just at a much lower percent. The other two reliquary scarabs here are honestly kind of trash. Uh, unique monsters drop an additional unique item. And if you get like, let's say 50 unique mobs, which you can obtain, that's really 50 uniques, which is honestly kind of terrible, especially if they're obeying the same weightings as current unique items do. The scarab is really not going to see much use. And then lastly for reliquary, obviously the nameless tier isn't very applicable to MF. So we'll move on from there. All of the divination scarabs are pretty GG, 150% increased divination cards found in area and then obviously we have curation which i'm sure you've seen a lot of discussion about and i'll actually talk about this a lot more later and then of course a 20 percent chance for the div cards to drop in full stack these are the big winners of the patch you're going to be having a much higher reliance on div card farming than you ever have before moving on to torment here torment used to be relevant for ghosting and ms strategies but i think only five tormented spirits for the scarab slot here is not good enough to put inside an mfing strategy just therefore it is not going to be very good moving down the list obviously we have ambush you can add a lot of boxes however there is a distinct absence of enraged you can cope all you want that the horn scarab has enraged on the craft but i don't believe that ggg would ever add monstrous treasure on a scarab and then at the same time add enraged i just don't think that that's a possibility and i think you guys are just hard coping but obviously we're gonna have to wait and see i just think that enraged is removed from the game so you're gonna have to take your strategies elsewhere the one scarab that is going to save the league for magic finders is going to be this horned scarab of bloodlines this is going to be one of the most expensive scarabs and most sought after scarabs from magic finders solo and groups alike so definitely keep your eye out on this one so you can sell it to group players and stuff make your big chunk of money if you pick one of these up now why is this op well if you think back to old enraged you had 500 percent increased quantity of the monster packs that came out of the strong box and now that is very powerful but if you take a quick look at the monster modifiers page on the wiki here you can see a bunch of innate modifiers that affect all magic monsters there's two cute little lines here one is 600 percent increased item quantity and 200 percent increased item rarity which is obviously a really crazy stat when you assume it's applied to every monster that's spread across the map it's important to note here that this scarab will almost certainly only affect native or natural inhabitants to the map therefore adding stuff like breach or abyss doesn't work with this scarab and so you're going to have a heavy focus on juicing the number of natural inhabitants on your map and so this is going to lead us to our current strategy which is going to be a t16 map conqueror base hopefully hunter influence with five orbs using triple div scarabs and a horned scarab of the bloodline i think this is going to be the meta mfing strategy if you choose to do so but there's one contention of course and that is going to be what is going to be the price of this scarab if the horned scarab of bloodlines is two three four five div it's going to be very tough for solo players to justify buying this kind of thing and it's basically only going to be used in groups however it is the biggest bang for your buck in that slot and i can explain why first off it takes a little bit of explaining about divination scarabs and why they are so wild if they stack together now the divination scarab of curation gives you div cards from different areas that you favorited and 10% more per each area that you're favored. So you're heavily incentivized to favorite 12 different maps, all of them that give very good cards. I had a guy in my discord named Body Pillow. Shout outs to him. He put a lot of work into this program. And basically, uh, we have a program that can output all of the different div card combinations, and it can give us the best combination of maps that we can use for the divination scarab of curation. Now, this takes a lot of explaining on how we arrive to these 12 maps maps. The first thing to understand is that when you're adding these 12 maps, it is much more important to add more eligible cards than it is to worry about diluting the pool, so to speak. Your card expected value goes way up just by adding more eligible cards than you would by having a diluting effect by adding bad cards. The way item drops work in PoE is there's a huge drop waiting table. You can see here in the game constants drop pool page on PoEDB. All of these get added up together, and then the div cards are calculated separately at the end. 
If you go to Maps of Exile, you can hover any div card here and you can see the drop weighting of the card. And basically, after all of the drop weights here are added up in the game constants, the game does a calculation and it adds all the div cards at the end. The drop weighting table here is already in the millions. Adding, you know, a div card that's adding like 10,000 has a very small dilution effect. And so it is way more important to add more eligible cards than it is to worry about diluting the pool. So that's number one. Adding more eligible cards is way more important. Secondly, you need to run a calculation for expected value as well as stack scarab expected value. The values or expected values of these div cards change based on the stack size if you are using both divination scarabs. That is one that has a 20% chance to drop as a full stack instead. So we have basically gone through all of the cards on all of the maps that we deem valuable and something that we might want to sell as a player. And we have force shown them on the list here. Additionally, there are a bunch of cards that we have force removed, which we as players have deemed not worth picking up or not easy to sell. And so this is a hand curated list of all of the cards on the maps that you might want to pick up. From there, it is very important that you go back and scrub the pricing data and do manual overrides for stuff like currency div cards. The reason for that is pricing data for div cards that give currency is just fucking garbage. If you can take a quick look at the page here for Reign of Chaos on PoE Ninja, it says that one Reign of Chaos is one Chaos Orb, which makes no sense. And so it's very important to go back to all of the currency cards and do manual price overrides with ratios you think are acceptable. Um, and we've done that for every single currency card in the game, or at least ones that we might pick up. And so we have good ratios for all those. I think using the data for the div cards for the more expensive ones is fine. Uh, we've just used historical pricing data for that. From there, you can run a greedy algorithm, which just selects the best maps top down, but that will bring you to a local maxima, which gets you pretty close. However, if you handpick a bunch of the maps with acceptable div cards and you run like a 30 map, choose 12, the permutations are quite large, but it should only take like five, 10 seconds for your computer to compute that. And we've arrived at this set of 12 maps. However, there is another set of maps that is slightly better, but I think this one has more sellable cards. So this is going to be the map set of 12 that we are running. If you want, I will leave a link down to this app in the description. You can open the sandbox down here at the bottom right and then fork it yourself if you'd like to look at all of the code and or the pricing data we've used. Once again, I want to shout out Body Pillow. He's definitely the one that put all this together. He I spent a lot of time on this. I definitely want to shout out him. But yeah, looking at the div card output using all of this data is the important thing for us. So what we can do is count a common card, in our case, the union, and we are assuming we get 47 unions per map. Now, this is half of the div card output that we got in Total League. In total, we got an average of about 95 unions per map. And so for our calculations, we just decided because we're juicing it less with less mobs, uh, we're going to assume that we're getting about half of the div card output. And in that case, we would have 10,500 chaos per map in div card expected value, which is a shit ton. I think because your expected value from div cards is so high, because you are enabling so many div cards to be found on your map, it makes the argument that going triple div scarab and dropping reliquary entirely is going to be very, very enticing this league, especially with the gigantic nerf of the 250% to 100% unique items for the slot. Last thing to mention here is that this 150% increased divination cards found in area will stack additively with itself if you use two. It potentially will stack in a multiplicative fashion because this is 10% more divination cards on the curation scarab. And then of course, the stack scarab here of completion is just going to multiply that again in another fashion. So you really, really, really are incentivized to use all three. Now, if three of your four scarabs Scarab slots are taken by div scarabs. The question is, what the fuck do you add to your map that's going to give you the most bang for your buck? And that, of course, is the horn scarab of bloodlines. This adds the most effective quant to the mobs, which is mob IIQ. And that is one of the best forms of quant that you're missing. And then because all of the mobs are magic and we assume these are natural inhabitants, the last step is to just add as many natural inhabitants as possible via conqueror maps. Alva is a great way. Other stuff like shrines is viable. And you're going to have a really GG strat. So let's take a look at the atlas tree for this strategy real quick here. Now, it's basically going to be taking all of the map mod effect around the tree. That's pretty obvious. If you're unaware, effective map modifiers is just the best stat to put on your map when you're magic finding. It scales pack size, rarity, and quantity all at the same time. So you're making a tree that grabs the top hat here and all of the map mod effect, and that's great. From there, you want to put as much beyond chance on possible. You're just going to get 100% from these.
these nodes here, these nodes down here, um, and then a couple nodes up here as well. One thing to note about the Beyond cluster is we are getting Swarming Hive here, which is 30% more div cards found from Beyond Demons in your map that are followers of Katash. Um, and this is important because I believe you can force Katash followers via the All Flame, which I'll get to a little bit later. Now, after you've taken all of the map modifier effect and all the Beyond stuff, you do want to get Conqueror map pack size because I believe this is the best way to scale the pack size of the natural inhabitants on the map. You can get 25 pack size up here. Additionally, you can get a bunch of Eldritch pack size, which are also native mobs. Eldritch pack size down here, as well as the double downsides of the altar with the increased effect. This is all no-brainer stuff you've seen before with juicing atlases. You already are in proximity to a bunch of Alva chants down here. You can add more Alva here um, and then get 100% from the last wheel up here. The reason Alva is very good is we ran a few tests with Fubgun. Shoutouts to Fubgun here. Uh, he ran a map with only killing the natural inhabitants of the mo uh, map, and that is no extra content based. No abysses, no breaches, nothing. Um, and just in a standard map, no delirium, nothing. It's 1,400 white mobs, 334 blue mobs. Now to contrast this, if you add Alva to the map, you're going from around 1,400 to 2,400 white mobs here and 461 blue mobs. So you can see the power that Alva can bring in terms of natural inhabitants to your map. And so I think this leads us to believe that Alva is back, baby. It's finally not dead. And just because it brings a ton of white mobs, not that Alva is actually doing anything. And then last, of course, from the tree, you're going down to the bottom left and you're grabbing a bunch of this haunted modifier effect. I think that this is going to be very good for adding additional quantity on the map. We saw quantity, we saw rarity, we saw extra shrines when, you know, the mobs are killed. And so I do think you're going to see some pretty crazy stuff down here. So you want to grab the necropolis stuff at the bottom left down here for sure. Last, we're just jamming blight on the map. It's just a mechanic that you can get a very high spawn chance as well as you can make it spawn faster and have more mobs. It isn't natural inhabitants, but it is just a very quick pickup uh, just to add a bunch of extra mobs to your map. So uh, the blight stuff is, you know, take it or leave it, but that's just what we're going to go for for now. The other strategy to talk about here is going to be the T17 maps. Now, Mark did mention on Zizarin's podcast thingy that the T17 maps are much larger, have way more mobs, and they also have an inherent quantity bonus and rarity bonus to them. T16 mobs don't have. So there is the potential that we can do T17 maps here because they have an inherent quant bonus. The downside is, is that you can't use Twist of Fate, which adds additional quantity to the map. It's tough to say what's going to come out on top. It really depends on, you know, if the T-17s are adding a ton more extra quant. We don't know. It's basically Twist of Fate versus the T-17s. We're going to run both, in which case you want to run T-17s. You do have to run a different atlas here because I do think it's worth putting a delirium mirror on the map. So you have to cut some stuff. Basically, the conqueror spawn, you know, pack size here, and then also have to put delirium spawn chance to get the 100% delirium here. But we're going to try out both. One of them is probably going to be better than the other, and we're just going to run that one. The map mods on the T-17s might be a little bit too much with 90% map effect, but we're just going to have to wait and see if our characters can handle that. Um, but yeah, it's going to be one of those two strategies. And so this is going to be the thing that I think replaces enraged strongbox farming if you're in a large party or you're going for just max MF, I think that this is the replacement for strong boxes. Anybody telling you that this sulfite scarab of fumes is the replacement to enraged strong boxes is just coping, to be honest. Uh, this is not going to come close to what enraged gave you. This spawns so many packs of mobs, you can open them twice, can shove so many boxes on your map, and this is going to be a fraction of what uh, enraged was giving you before. Plus, on the podcast with Mark and Ziz, they basically mentioned that this is going to have a local cap. Only mobs that are originating from around the enraging fumes can be infected. You cannot simply just pull all of the mobs onto one spot and give them all 500% increased item quantity. That is not how it works. Okay, that is the end game farming strategy that we're going to be going for. The next up is going to be the progression trees that we're all going to be running. Now, once again, I'm putting all of these down in the description so you can click on the passive trees and follow along if you like. Uh, the first progression tree is going to be similar to what you've seen a lot of other content creators put out, and that is definitely pathing through these Nico nodes here and getting the sulfite two pointer for the extra movement speed damage and max res it is a very nice crutch that you can use early to get a bunch of increased damage and then of course you're going to be pathing through all of the kirak stuff in the middle here and then straight up to unwavering vision to get the plus 20 points you're going to see a lot of trees that are doing something similar some might skip the kirak stuff here but i think it's a mistake and then the rush to unwavering vision you're going to see a lot of people do from there you want to pick up a bunch of the scouting report stuff as well as the kirak mission chance that's probably the next most important thing to grab after you get your 20 points as well as filling out all of your nico chance that you can maybe have a 100% chance to spawn them if you'd like. From there, you're adding a bunch of June stuff here on the right side. And basically, June is just a really good way to get XP early with safe houses. When you're in like the mid 80s or something, you know, low 90s, and you want to get all your XP so that you can go and attempt Uber bosses, picking up all the June stuff here and getting safe houses.
safe houses is really good in a party because if multiple people are doing it, you can then do safe house rotations and the XP is super good on those. After you pick up all the June stuff, the next thing to do is to pick up all of the destructive play stuff at the top. And this is going to be kind of the end game farming that you're doing before you transition to full six man MF. Destructive play got a really big buff with all the shrine scarabs and you kind of want to start to fill out all of your passive points. And once you're basically filled out everything, you can unspec on wavering vision. The last tree, of course, is going to be the unwavering vision unspec. And because you're using destructive play, you can then start putting on the domination scarabs. Now, the domination scarab is ripe for abuse here with destructive play because it creates effect where the shrine bosses are getting the final map boss modifiers. And this makes it so all of the destructive play stuff with all of the boss spawn chance and all of the chance to drop a guardian map are going to apply to every single shrine, which you can then add a bunch of shrines to your map to get additional bosses. And you're going to be multiplying the effect of your guardians of your destructive play. And you're just going to be farming bosses and guardians basically until you can afford your full respect to go to six man MF. Anyways, that's enough about cringe solo strats. Let's talk about the clown fiesta car uh, that we have here, which is going to be the ruckus team. Now, of course, very early on when you're like 20, 30 points, you're going to be doing ruckus bare minimum. And that is going to be these 52 points with unwavering vision. It is 32 points total. I mean, basically you're grabbing the exiled will as well as the ruckus nose to get a bunch of exiles on your map, meticulous appraiser to give it a bunch of rarity. And then you're also giving them guaranteed rewards here. And because all of them are possessed by tormented spirits, you want to give them the quantity here. And this is the bare minimum to start dumpstering maps for ruckus. Now, looking at the Atlas here, there is a very easy triple boss sustain that you're going to be able to do down here, which is going to be T2 Arcade into T3 Strand. This is a triple boss into a double boss, which you can ping pong and it's going to be very easy to favorite these two maps um, and then ping pong these so you can also MF the bosses. There is potential for the exploration node here with the affliction to be really good early for chaos recipe for early uniques. And so that is definitely a thing you can do. And eventually you can drop the unwavering vision and grab all of the map mod effect around the tree for more rarity. And then you can start putting exile scarabs on your map or anarchy. Getting a bunch of guaranteed exiles on your map is going to be super good if you're doing a bunch of chaos recipe early. I um, mean, with a meticulous appraiser, it does have very high output in a six man. Additionally, one potential strat that you can try and fish for, of course, is trying to get the map bosses with tormented spirits. And then you're waiting to just proc this tormented spirits node. And then you're killing the rest of the map and trying to get it afflictioned. And then you're going to have an affliction to tormented spirits triple boss, which you can ping pong between arcade and strand. I think that's going to be a very, very good strat for low level MFing until you have enough currency to do the big boy strats. Yeah, I think that's going to be all of the Atlas strats that are going to be running for the 324 expansion Acropolis. I think it's going to be quite a wild one with the horned scarab here. The horned scarab that makes everything magic honestly might be better than enraged. So this is uh, one that I'm definitely keeping my eye out for. I wouldn't be surprised if the scarab goes to like five divines. But yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see, of course. Anyways, if you have any questions, concerns, anything like that, you can always leave them in the comments. I'm trying to, you know, read and respond to many people as I can. Once again, I league start on twitch.television. You can check me out there. I'm also on Twitter if you want to follow me. And once again, I'm Snap and thanks for watching.